Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 2 series. Cornelius presents Recognizing Addictions in Relationships, filmed on the 31st of July 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. We might get started. There's a couple missing, but they'll come in as we get going. So, good morning, afternoon, it is our now to you all. <laughs> I'm going to be talking with you today about recognizing addictions in relationships. And the relationships we're going to be talking about is more the romantic type of relationship, which I guess most of you have been in a romantic type of relationship. Show of hands if you have. All right, excellent. Everybody's going to enjoy this, I hope. Um, we're going to look at the addictions in the relationships. So it prevents love happening in the relationships. The addictions we're going to be talking about and focusing on today is not the intellectual idea of the relationship or understanding of the relationship. We're just trying to, I want to try and connect you with the feeling of what the addiction is like. Because unless you know what the, the feeling is like, you'll never get to change it. And, you just don't, and we want to try and recognize that feeling in our day-to-day -day lives so we can catch it all the time when we start, start that feeling we start, we're going to learn about today. If you can get onto that, we'll learn to see that in our life so we can catch it before we start going down the path of destruction, basically. This is just the pain train. You don't want to be on that on the rest of your life. So we're trying to get a hold of that in this talk, if we can. Well, it won't all happen today, but it'll just give you an idea <laughs> what's going to happen. All right. So how do relationships normally flow or proceed? What's the first thing? So what are the initial feelings in a relationship? You've all had one, so you're all qualified here. So anybody have an idea? What's the initial, like when you're just not in a relationship, you're just starting to enter one, what's it, what's it feel like? Jane? Jane, um, you get this sort of fuzzy feeling within you. Yep. Sort of yep. this warm, sort of like a warm, fuzzy feeling. The energy's starting to buzz through you. It's feeling pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you can't, that it's... Yeah, it's just there whenever you see the person. Yeah, all the yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, and when you're not with them as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah, the back there, Gary. Uh, it's just a constant euphoric feeling, you know, because it's absolutely true love, you know. So yeah. it's sort of, you know, <laughs> it's um, yeah. yeah, you know, all the addictions are being met all at once, you know. So it's like yeah, right on, isn't yeah, it? It's yeah, like, like I, I, you know, I, I want more of this. Yeah. You know, so. Give it to me. <laughs> yep. Just leave your hand up for the mic runner so they can find you. It's hard when you look at back of heads, you know faces, but you can't recognise back of heads. Sandra, uh, a compulsion to be with the person. Yeah. So you're always driven to be around them. Yep, like all the time. Desire. Yeah, yeah just want them, want them. <laughs> yep. Down the front here, Marco. You feel like no one else exists, you know? Just yeah, she's just yeah. her. Yeah. yeah. Apple of your eye. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just want to pass it behind you there. There's this gen feeling of generosity, you know, like you can forgive other people. You're just like um, feeling so good and everything. You want to give you really, all your soul to them. Yeah, you ge <laughs> not, not just to that one person, but when you're in love. You're also generous oh, yeah. towards all the other things. Life feels great, doesn't it? Yeah. You feel fantastic. <laughs> Everything's just perfect. You love your work that you hate even as well. Yeah. What else, Cardi? Um, you want to please. Yep. Totally. We're good at that, aren't we? Uh, yes, just Karina. The whole world's rosy and I've finally made it. Yeah. That's fantastic, isn't it? I was showing the other group last time, I might give you a little demonstration of it too. It's a bit like you meet you look, get this most fantastic woman, you just gotta meet her, she is just terrific. She makes me feel so good, she just makes me feel so alive. I just feel so awesome. I feel fantastic. She's just like 
I'm in love. I'm just in love. I'm in love. I'm in love. I'm in love. I'm gonna get married. Gonna get married. Gonna get married. Gonna get married. Yeah, baby, put a ring on it. Then we can have babies, have babies, and baby. Wah! Gonna be a daddy. Gonna be daddy. Gonna be daddy. Gonna be daddy. It feels just so good. We're gonna be happy forever after. Ah. Oh. That's how it is. You've been there. <laughs> so now we're getting the feeling of the feeling. That's what we want to get to, the feeling, the excitement, the buzzing energy, because it just rushes through you, doesn't it? All right, so what happens next? There's a honeymoon period we're talking about. They're all, all the fluffy, everything's great, it's awesome, just the world's so awesome, incredible. Wouldn't want any better. And you have a feeling of connection, understanding, someone knows me, somebody wants me. Someone understands me. Then, <laughs> what are the feelings over time in a relationship? Like it's got on for a little while now. Addictions are starting to dry it out a little bit. What's that sort of like? How does that feel? Sandra? It sucks. Yeah, it's not feeling so good anymore, is it? Where's the fantastic feeling gone? Where'd it go? Kelly, yep. Kelly, um, it feels harder. Feels it does. The euphoria is gone. Go, all sort of going. It feels a bit more uh, labour. Yeah, yeah. No, I was excited. Sort of a grind a bit. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yep. Um, just down the back there. Linda, you feel disillusioned. Yeah, what happened to all those good feelings? Oh, great, like, where would they go? How, where do they disappear to? Jennifer, fears start coming up. They can do, yeah. It's like, what's, what is my life? Like, what happened? Like, I don't understand like, why it was so good before. And, and you start wondering, was, was it really love? And that's a bit scary when you feel like you just found something so awesome and just where does it go? It just slides away. Down the front here. Uh, Nikki, uh, you start feeling um, emotionally drained, like in certain interactions with them. Yeah, you didn't notice it before. No. This is all buzzing. <laughs> yeah. 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 If you start feeling a little bit sort of a bit pissy, a bit angry. <laughs> A little bit annoyed with the person now, like the little things that were sort of quirky before, of pissing us off a little bit, and you know, the things we used to just, oh, that, you know, the farting in the bed stuff. Like it was just a bit of a joke at first, but it just keeps going now. It's like every friggin' night. It ain't funny anymore. But I don't want to say anything because I'm still getting sex. But she farts all the time. You thought it was a man, didn't you? But, so it starts getting a little bit sort of long in the tooth, so that it's not as good anymore, not as fun anymore. So how does it end? If the relationship ends, what happens? Samantha's up there, you can even say him if you want. <laughs> Anybody? Jane? Jane, um, because you're feeling so angry and irritated all the time, you just feel feel like, you just can't cope with this anymore. I'm not happy. Like yeah, the addictions ain't working anymore. It's just always fights because no one's meeting each other's addictions. It's just not going to be any fun anymore. And Linda, uh, Linda, you start to withdraw from the relationship. You put mm. distance between you. Yeah, it doesn't feel nice anymore, does it? Like that, just almost like two enemies living in the same place. Uh, Dennis, you go to work all the time. Well, yeah, we'll try and work to have, keep the relationship or work to keep the addictions, I should say. Yeah, and they're not going off too well anymore, are they? Uh, Rob? Uh, Robert? Um, sometimes uh, one person feels relieved and the other one's very sad. How do you mean? Well, one person who ends the relationship is often relieved that they're out of it, mm -hmm. but the other person can be very unhappy, you know? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't working. One, one person's realised quicker than the other person about the addictions. One person's addictions still want to be met, but they're not there anymore. The other person just go, wants to go find some more, <laughs> really. 
<laughs> they, want, they want those ones to dry it out. Yeah. Hala? It feels like, uh, well, in the beginning I was the true, my true self, and now I have to put on the facade to sort of to even cope with it. Oh, I suggest it was a facade all the way through, actually. But, yeah, but yeah. It, that's how it feels like. That in the beginning, I was I was really giving all of myself, my true yes. self. But now yeah. I have to pretend. Yeah, it's a bit. And now like, it's a facade, and before it wasn't. Well, it's a bit like I imagine it as, um, like say you're a shop and you put all your good wares out on display for everybody. You're trying to attract the person. They come in. Oh, look at that! Looks very nice. I walk in this door and check it out. They like all the good bits. But then out the back there's this warehouse full of all this, all my, all these things I don't like about myself, all the hurt stuff about myself, and something in the relationship they might ask in the middle bit. Oh, what's behind that door there? What door? No door there. Oh, yeah, the door. Oh, it's just painted on the wall. It's not really a door. <laughs> just try and cover it up as much as possible. Yeah. They're the parts, yeah, the parts we don't like about ourselves and don't want the other person to see. And mm. um, one more. Um, I'm almost Thalia. Yeah, got it. <laughs> um, sometimes, you know, you can go into real depression, um, you know, because your addiction's not being met anymore, so you, you, go, you feel, you know, completely rejected, alone. Um, you go into all of those sorts of feelings, even sometimes suicidal because, you, you know, sometimes like the other person can, you feel like, they're your world and now you've just lost your whole world and what are you going to do with your life? Yeah, how do you feel about the person? How do you feel about the person? Yeah, the person that was your world, that gave you everything and yeah, exactly. now they're gone. Yeah, exactly. So how do you feel about them then? Oh, you feel like a great loss. But, but you know, yeah. generally you feel kind of really angry towards them as well. Generally, for, yeah. Yeah, like for... Yeah. Going. I love you, but I hate you. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it's like that, you know. Yeah, yeah completely. Yeah. Completely illogical. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, we'll move on to the next one. So after it ends, what happens then generally? There's a couple of things that generally all... Um, Dennis, back. Dennis, I usually go and look for the addictions to be met somewhere else. Yeah, I want to find another one. So first of all, yeah, right on, wasn't it? So there's got to be more of that out there somewhere, so keep going looking for it. Because now we're feeling all the crappy feelings and don't want to feel lame. Anybody else? Karina? I think the worst one can be when um, you feel all that stuff and then rather than feel the abandonment or whatever, you both go back again and have another go and then have another go and have it, and it gets more and more toxic. Mm. But the, the co-addiction becomes really ghastly and in my case nearly life-threatening. It can do, yeah. Uh, Cal, up the back. Uh, you just shut down more and harden up a bit more. Yeah, you may become more jaded towards love, don't you? Is it what, you, what the world calls love and what we thought was love was an addiction. Uh, level of love, we might open up a sort of like about this much level, but after a relationship, we just sort of might think about love more at a lower level and just only want relationships who are shut down more and only want relationships at this sort of level then who have more jaded and hurt feelings and don't really deal with them, end up getting lower and lower and lower in our acceptance of what we accept in a relationship with love, even though it is faux love a lot of the times, earthly type of love. Um, Gary, up the back there. Yeah, I've, I've found that it just, um, you get jaded and like you don't trust another relationship. And so yeah. I just, I mean, the pro, you just shut your heart down. You yeah, just, you, can't you, just get, you just get hard and, and, and cynical, mm. you know, and just, in my case, just you know, be by myself. So just avoiding, you know, opening your heart up again. So you, you just um, be by yourself or, or avoid any sort of relationship. Yeah, sometimes you can avoid people altogether and just, yeah. Drown our sadness in alcohol or other things yeah, too. Okay, they work a lot of time, keep busy. Just find another addiction that'll make, that'll keep us away from the people part because the love part sucked. I almost did that in my life too. It's going to just plan a life of just earning money. Life dealt me, dealt me a different deal on that one, so it was good. <laughs> I'll move on. To, so we become resistive with other relationships, don't we? And 
end up the amount of love is more and more damaged just because we're wanting the love from addictive relationships and believe that's their way. So if it doesn't end, how does it feel? What do we end up doing if we stay in a relationship? The sort of the faded part sort of gone out, like the good good parts have gone out. We're just staying in the relationship where it's in the faded sort of area. Yes. Carol, you close down more and more and become more and more defensive and there's less and less energy flowing and there's more and more pain. Yeah, we're staying in it though, do you know why we're staying in it? Like, oh, why? Yeah. Um, the fear of feeling the loss of the addictions. Or the hurt. The hurt, yeah. If there's like... Um, so what do you, there's an original reason we got into the relationship and sort of some of the addictions are gone, but there's still a few hanging around in there to keep us there. Yeah. And they feel okay, just not good, but okay. And a lot of, covering a lot of our deeper hurts too. So we don't want to go into our deeper hurts. The other ones, you can put up with the farting for now, but the other ones, you don't want to be alone. It's going to be a different one. Uh, Pierre? I was in a long relationship, I would say. It was not working, not feeding my addiction anymore. And I was feeding some big addiction, obviously, because I stay engaged. But I was looking outside other women to feed my other addictions. Yeah, like my sexual rejection. Trying to get yeah. a feeling from a woman that will give you something because your partner's not. Yes. Yeah. So it makes it more destructive, doesn't it, in the relationship, just staying there. Yeah. Uh, one more, Nick. Uh, Nick, I think people don't want to feel the rage or the anger of the partner if they uh, if they leave. The a lot of times there is rage going on constantly in the relationship. Yeah. They're just pretty pissy that the relationship's not getting met, like the addiction's not getting met in the relationship. And often I've got some friends actually that are like that all the time. They they have these little sarcastic comments towards each other with a smile on their face. It's just like up the cut and punch around the ribs and stuff like that. And then they just go, oh, I love you so much and give each other a hug with knives just stabbing in the back almost. <laughs> it's horrible to watch. Or of the roses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just lots of thorns. So, why does all this happen? Why is this whole thing going on? So relationships go this way because you don't want to have a relationship with God. We want a relationship with the person that's going to meet all of our addictions and give us all that good feeling straight away. I'm not interested in having a relationship with God at all. Because we believe and trust in this system of addictions. We still believe and trust in it. It's going to give us our good feelings and take away our hurtful feelings, our painful feelings. And it feels like it's true at first, doesn't it? The first one we had, that first little tinge of a feeling, how long does that last? Not too long, huh? That one. So what we're looking for is all uh, good feelings, trying to get those met by people and trying to avoid all the bad feelings that we feel inside of ourselves. The good feelings make me feel happy, alive, wanted, make me feel needed, approved of, make me feel like I've got worth, accepted. The bad feelings make me feel sad, you feel pretty unhappy, depressed, you feel dead inside, you feel rejected by everything and everybody in the world, you feel completely unaccepted, you feel completely unworthy. And they're the ones we're trying to avoid the most in our life rather than feel them. So today we're going to be covering this part of the addiction cycle, the top half. Mary's going to cover this bottom half with you later about challenging the addictions. And as we know, we've been learning, have we learnt this yet, that addictions cause pain and suffering in our lives? An intellectual level, yes. <laughs> yeah, we're going to try and get you to start understanding or getting into the feelings of emotionally why that is. So I can, so I can see a lot of people of understanding, starting to understand um, intellectually that's the way it is, but it's, nothing's going to change. It's at a soul level all this stuff's happening. We need to get, and soul, you're going to have to start feeling if you want to get to the soul level. So we already know they're going to be unsatisfying because they're a facade of the real thing and not the real thing. We need to find the real thing. 
We need to find the real self inside of us too, and addictions are going to keep covering that. So we can have some real experiences of love, not this fake love that we call, well, addictions love, that what the world calls love. And they'll always keep demanding more and more and more. Always want, it's just, just a repetitive cycle that just demands that we want to keep getting more and more met all the time. After one addiction has died off, just like Pierre was saying, it may slowly die off, so we just start looking somewhere else straight away for it. Don't care what's going on behind me, don't care about my life, who's involved in it already. I just want my addiction met. I'm very selfish, very self centered, just focused on me, getting it met so de desperately all the time. This causes a lot, a lot of pain that we don't even look behind us and see it. So, why do I want addictions? I'll get into this. How do I want to feel generally? Just a general, just a one word answer would be fine. Somebody? Yeah. Yep. Yep, mic so that everybody else can hear it. Sorry, I thought you were asking us all for one yeah. word. Yeah. Karina, happy. Yeah, I want to feel happy. What do I not want to feel? Mary? <laughs> <laughs> uh, sad, uncomfortable, unsafe. Um, Depressed, fearful, anything. All of them. All yep. of them. Yep. I don't want to feel any of them. Yeah. Susan, so don't want to feel bad. Just want to feel good. So, what do I want to feel about myself? Lani, um, I just want to feel that I'm okay, that I'm acceptable, and. Mm. Anybody else? Loved. Yeah. <coughs> Wanted. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if those are nice feelings. I feel that I'm worthy of it all. So I want to feel that I'm good, I'm wanted, I'm loving, I'm truthful, even if I'm none of those things. But I still want to make, make myself feel like I am. I'll try and find people to make me feel like I am. I don't want to feel all the bad that I I don't want to feel that I'm bad, unworthy, broken, wrong, etc. Even when I'm all of those things at some stages in my life, a lot of the time. My addictions are going to be a lot of those things. I don't want to face the truth of my soul condition or the truth about myself, and that's a big one. This is the one that gets us in the most trouble. This is the one that gets us into wanting addictions. We don't want to see the truth inside of ourselves. We don't want to see the true hurt inside of ourselves. We're going to end up down this destructive path in that condition. So who do I want a relationship with? Ange? And Trent? Hang up, Trent. My facade. Uh, yeah, we do, or in a way. Trent? Um, anyone that anyone will meet my addictions? Exactly. Yeah. Who's that going to be? Anybody know? <laughs> First person that comes along. <laughs> <laughs> Milliseconds, anybody in my radar area. <laughs> yeah. It's not someone I can... We don't want to have a relationship with God we've discovered before, didn't we? We, that's the reason why we're having wanting relationships with other people. So we don't have a belief like, like we can have a relationship with God. It's a real core belief inside of ourselves that's in error, but we believe it quite strongly. So we just go and have relationships with people, trying to meet our feelings, make, our, make us feel good. So because God's not someone I can see, I don't want to have a relationship with God. I could just go and grab the next chick. That's it, done. I don't have to work with a relationship with God. I want to have my addiction satisfied straight away. And that's an addiction in itself, rather than actually making an effort and learning something about ourselves. And God must be felt. And because we're shutting down emotionally, it's not going to be possible. And because of this addiction cycle, we don't want to feel. So it's never going to happen. So we just completely rely on people to, to satisfy us. God doesn't feed any of my addictions, so <laughs> are we going to get along with God too good? We're going to be having a battle, aren't we? Because we believe in this system still, this system of addictions. God's not going to meet any of those conditions. 
And God's going to challenge all of my addictions, your relationship with God, all of them. And we're not really ready to be challenged, are we? You want to, like this little system that's been working for us, kind of sucking a little bit, but still working for us a little bit. We just have a lot of faith in the wrong system because we just don't want to feel. So basically, bottom line, I don't really want a relationship with God. It's pretty simple. Why do you want addictions? That's where it is. Why do you want a relationship to make you feel, feel good? That's where it's going to be. I don't want a relationship with God. Break means we're going to go on a break. Welcome back from your break. And we'll get moving on. So how do I recognise my own addictions? So Mary's showing you this diagram before. Let's go through those things. Oops. Okay. Mary went through this diagram with you before. And so we went to have a feeling of an addiction. Like we've got an uncomfortable... Let's start with the start. We've got some feelings we don't want to feel right. Some uncomfortable feelings inside of ourselves. We're just not going there. So we're going to create an addiction straight away to cover up that fear of not going there. So we're going to have this feeling come up. Something like this sort of feeling coming up inside of ourselves. And we're going to do something about that, aren't we? Because we're driven to get rid of this feeling. So we're going to go and act on it somewhere. And we come down here, if we act on it, when it gets met, we start feeling some of these feelings, justified in control, safe, relief, great, satisfied, loved. And it feels great and we start believing in the system. It's good when they're not met. We feel in physical pain, it feels unsafe, unloved, frustrated, angry, in a panic, in anxiety. We have to go get another feeling met. So we're feeling all the crap feelings again. We're trying to get away from the crap feelings. That's our, that's our goal rather than feeling them. We've got it all wrong, but that's our goal. We're trying to get away from our crappy feelings. So you're not back in the system again. So we're knowing that we've... You guys are pretty good at that. All the whole world's good at that. I've been doing it ever since you were conceived. So let's start working out how we can do something about that. So what do my addictions feel like? What do they feel like before I meet a person? Like you've all been in relationships. So what does it feel like before you meet the person? In just in this little section here. Yes, Rose, is it? It feels like an eternal longing and yearning. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Nick? Desperate. Yes, very desperate. Gary? Uh, <clears throat> extremely empty and just want someone to fill it up, get filled up. Yes, what's the, what's the feeling of being empty and then wanting someone to fill it up. What's that feeling? It's almost like a desperation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Yep. Back. Rebecca, um, feels needy, like a ne you need to feel that need. Yeah, very needy. <laughs> Anybody else? Miranda, is it? No? Yeah. <laughs> Learning names very slowly. It's got to be now. It's like, yeah, yeah, straight away, gotta have something, gotta, gotta, gotta. Yeah, it's like yeah. there's no option. No yeah. Other option. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Hello, Liam. Um, I'm having trouble with this um, talk, and my feeling is that I don't want to meet someone so it feels like I'm I don't want to did you have in the past met someone oh, so what I was see. the feeling like before then just as you're starting like the feeling of or well, before you've got into that relationship what was the feeling just previous to that right like for a relationship yeah because you haven't got one so you're desperate to have one yeah oh, I just said a word desperate but <laughs> what was your feeling uh, yeah, all um, uh, all of those uh, to, to want to feel attractive, to feel to be wanted, and all of those 
feelings. Uh, I'm having a lot of trouble with this. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just. Uh, this is what we're trying to start connecting with. Yeah. There. Yeah. I. I I, I feel my addictions seem to be uh, like the, the, the trying to get away from the good feelings, trying to get away from all of that, going the other way, because that's what my addiction is, the, the, the bad feelings and the... I can't agree with you on that one. No. Ah. No. Uh, I'll keep moving on if you're stuck yeah, on that. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'll just write them up here. I won't write them. I'll show them for it's... Once the one was written up here, it's a feeling of compulsion, just got to have it obsessive, frenetic. It's almost a frenzy going on inside of ourselves, just trying to get it. An insatiable urge, infatuation with it. We're desperate, we're driven, we're urgent. And what was the feeling before we had a relationship we're trying to get away from? Just feeling crap, aren't we? Just, and just don't want to feel that feeling, so we get all desperate about it and infatuated with trying to get it met and get all urgent and driven. Just got to get it met desperately. We just got to get away from that feeling. Got to get away. Anything. Even if I don't like the, but anything. <laughs> just anything. So we'll move on. So when I meet them, what's the feeling like? Like when I'm getting my addiction met on this little diagram here, what's that like? trying to get you to connect with the feelings. You've had experiences in your life, so just remember your experiences and just remember your feelings in that experience. I must be okay because this person's attracted to me. So it feels pretty like, it good. It feels like all my Christmases have come at once. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Cal? Relief. Oh, yeah. Thank oh. God. I yeah, say that. thank God, but yeah, when you're frantic and desperate and in that manic sort of state, when it's all like someone's come, oh man, it's feeling. Anybody yeah. else? Yes. It just feels complete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel whole again. Let's go through some of these are the words we got here. So we're happy again. We're wanted, needed, relieved. What's the biggie? What's the big one? Yes. Inverted commas loved, by the way, not God's version. There it is, loved. <laughs> Satisfied, pleased, content now. I feel safe, feel warm and all fuzzy and cared for. So I feel gratified, rewarded. So what's the addiction met feel like when... Yeah, so what's the addiction being met feel like when I'm in a relationship? What's life like now? Yeah, Miranda? It's easy, it's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Cardi? And Cal over here. Keep your hand. Loved. Once you feel loved. When it's being met, you feel yeah. loved? Yeah. And it's warm and fuzzy. You can... Beg your pardon? That's all right, kids. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cal? Safe and secure. Yeah. And what's it like once these, like we've got a met, so these feelings we had before, it's now been met. What did this feel like before? How did life feel like when we were in this sort of state? Bit out of control, wasn't it? So now I feel like life's back in control again. Everything's smooth again. Isn't that what we want? We're just trying to get away from that horrible feeling all the time, the uncomfortable feeling all the time. That's what my addictions, I believe, do for me. So what is it like when they don't get met? So we're going down this cycle. Tried out something, didn't get met. How do I feel? This has happened to you, so <laughs> you remember your own. Ex just come from your own experiences, from your own feelings inside yourself, and what's happened in your own life. This is how you're going to try and recognise the feelings. Yet, uh, Linda, it, you feel unworthy. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it brings up the feeling you're trying to run away from a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, Jules, 
rejected. Yeah. Utterly rejected. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Stevie? Uh, Phoebe, uh, deceived. deceived. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, you got ripped off. <laughs> it's supposed to give me a good feeling. It's supposed to supply me something great in my life. Uh, who have you seen? Um, Catherine. Yeah. I'm trying to remember names. What did I do wrong? How can I change it? Yeah, I've been like that a lot of times. I mm. think there's problems within me and I, I'm just deficient, I'm just unlovable, there's something completely damaged in me. Yes, so, yeah. and then you want to change. Yeah, and then I get angry at myself because I must yeah. be so bad at this and, yeah, well, that's what I used to be like that. Yeah, so a lot of these feelings too, we haven't really mentioned these ones, have we? Yeah, annoyance, anger and rage, injustice, indignation, a lot of these angry, angry, angry feelings we don't want to feel by the sounds of it. Unloved, unwanted, unneeded, discarded, and rejected. All these feelings we're trying to run away from. And rebellious, and tantrums, demanding and insisting. We get quite aggressive almost to get our addiction back, don't we? We do anything to get it back. Yeah. Become the love nutter, we used to call it. My mate it used to people who are desperate to get their addiction back to do anything. They'd just jump on a building and tell their love to the woman that they're trying to get their love back to and do all silly, crazy things a lot of the times. Yeah. It's a pretty crazy system, isn't it, addictions? Yeah. We look pretty silly. <laughs> so manipulating and managing, controlling just to try and get the love back, or what we call the love, will do anything. So what does addictions not being met feel like in a relationship? Just really angry. Yep. Yep. Uh, who's behind Kel there? Somebody, yeah. <laughs> Tess? Be Unfair. Yeah. Like it's all their fault. Big pattern? Unfair. Yeah. Unfair. Yep. Well, what do we feel like though when we've got that unfair feeling? There's, we'll drop down, there's another feeling we're going to feel. Yep. Bruce? Unworthy. You feel like you know. You feel like you've been um, badly, harshly dealt by. Yeah. 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 Injustice. Injustice of it. Yeah. yeah. So, have any of you guys had relationships where you've broken up from? You didn't get your addictions met. Yeah. So you're pretty good at this. <laughs> I'm pretty good at this. Yeah. I feel crap. It just feels crap, doesn't it? I feel terrible and just. Uh, Back into that horrible feeling you don't want to feel again, and back in, the, end up getting back in the cycle again, back on the back on the pain train, pretty quick. So when I become conscious that I've been living in them and wanting them, what's that feel like? Oh, I've got a hand. I didn't expect any hands with this one, so we'll see how we go. Okay, yep, Renee. Renee, oh shit, where do I go from here? Yep. Uh, I don't know your name yet. I'll hear it in the mic. I ran. You ran? I took my children and I ran because I knew what I was doing and I was never, ever going to do that again. Yeah, so we just want to escape from them? Yeah, but you shut his whole heart down then too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so we want to feel safe. Yeah. Mm. Then we become hard and resistive, don't we, unfortunately? Yeah. Sorts of like when we're recognising them, the feeling of them, we recognise them in our heart. We know we're, we're in addiction with our partner. We know it. We know we're doing something that's sinful here. What's it like? 
I think there's a little bit of shame. Yeah, definitely. Feel ashamed. Yeah, it's a big feeling that comes up. Yeah. Uh, what's your name? Amelia? I mean, how about you tell me? <laughs> Camilla. Yeah, thanks. Um, Camilla. Sadness. Yeah, we can feel quite sad about it, yeah. We come to recognition that we're harming someone knowingly, yeah. Pamela, um, <laughs> we we could feel more alone in a relationship when our, when we're not be, addictions are not being met than when we're alone by ourselves. We so alone. we can feel more alone when we're in the relationship than when we're. Of course, eh? your addictions will always make you feel more and more empty. Yeah. Because you're going further and further away from love. Love's the only thing that's going to fill you mm. up and, and real love, not addiction that's love. Right. Because we're more in self punishment about, you know, why isn't this working? Why isn't this working? There's something wrong with me. And we try harder and harder and harder. Um, it's only when we get out of it we realise we were punishing ourselves, which didn't help. This is about what we're talking about at the moment, just what it yeah. feels like when we recognise we've actually got an addiction yeah, and we, we're, gonna choose, we're inside yeah. of ourselves with another person. Right. And what, what do we feel when we have that recognition? Mm. I might put some words up just to help you guys. Is this helping? A little, feels a little bit sleazy now. Like We used to like wasn't working with our partner, so we started sexual projecting with everybody, accepting sexual projections from people, then we started realising the damage inside of ourselves, where it was coming from, the hurt about not being loved, and what we're doing to try and get more feelings coming to us, and then we're starting to realise, oh, man, I've been accepting all that and hurting other people doing this, and my partner, all these other people, he's been accepting he projections from and giving her projections to. We're starting to feel how that's, and starting to feel how sleazy and icky that feels after a while. I feel quite, it's always draining. Yes, Mary, got your answer? Oh, I was just going to mention that I think that uh, most people in the audience haven't been through these feelings yeah, yet. Yeah, I, I feel I, that too. Yeah, <laughs> I think you have. Yeah. And um, I have too, but I think this is all ahead, everyone. This is what's going to happen as you start mm. to get more sensitive to your addictions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we might just show you these. <laughs> so what else have we got there? Using others and being used ourselves. We're going to have a recognition that that's what we're doing, that we're even giving ourselves away as well to try and get something met from them. We have energy sucked from us constantly. It feels like we're getting something, but we're just having it sucked from us all the time. We just feel taken from emotionally all the time. We feel shame. It feels repulsive. The feeling does when you realise what an addiction does and how it feels and what it's, what it's doing to yourself and others. And when you start investigating to the damage that's been done by you wanting your addiction, and I'm not talking just the damage in a relationship, but you can have a look at the damage of the whole entire nation, the whole entire earth, you're part of that same addiction. It's massive. So what does a consciousness of an addiction feel like when I'm in a relationship? When I start becoming conscious of the addiction, many of you might not answer this one too, we'll have a shot. Nick? Uh, the two words that sum it up for me are parasitic and toxic. Mm. So, yeah, very toxic, because it's doing so much damage. Yeah. And, and, and certainly for me, parasitic is you're taking, taking mm. from someone else, leeching their life force. Mm. You know, to satisfy, satisfy my own. Yeah. Yeah. This part's going to be pretty difficult because it feels like there's a, the majority of the group, it feels like the, when we did the first part of the addictions, you got onto that pretty good. It feels like you're really, in, like there's almost an enjoyment of the addictions. And you can't see, it's not just seeing the damage it's causes, and all these feelings as well, but you'll it it come up and come to realise in the end. There's not a recognition of these, of what it's doing in relationships, 
we need to start to come to see these feelings, what it's doing. Start needing to see what our addictions do, need to see the damage that we're causing. Instead of just looking forwards all the time, we need to actually turn back and have a look and see who we've hurt and what we've done. Very, very important. Very important. We'll move on to the next one. So when I am in codependency, do you know what codependency is? I just flicked on, so we've got an answer there. Codependency requires a bartering system. It's an emotional bartering system between two people or more people. It's emotional prostitution, basically. It doesn't sound so pretty when we say it like that, does it? That we're willing to give a certain person an emotion in order to get something back from them. We're willing to sell ourselves to give them something. So what does a codependency feel like in a relationship? What does a codependent relationship feel like? Does anybody know? Because we're all in them. <laughs> so we should get some good answers. <laughs> uh, Susan. I think we're in a very codependent relationship and I just see the intertwining. It's like there's, a, there's an intertwining of one another's... Um, I guess facades and also our addictions mm -hmm. within um, our relationship and it's hard to know where the beginning is and the end is so you can't sort of, it's like trying to find where to start almost. Yeah. You almost feel like soulmates. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, it, because it, it's so intertwined there doesn't seem to be a beginning and an end to it and it's, um, yeah, it's like, yeah. It feels... Does it feel satisfying too? Like, I guess it must have for us to survive 43 yeah. years. <laughs> yeah, that's it. A lot of times we are pretty satisfied, aren't we? So it lasts a yeah. long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's pretty yucky when we really yeah. look at it. Yeah. Um, Anto? It feels quite supportive. Mm. Yeah. The areas we're not good at, the other person's looking after. Yeah. The areas that she's not good at, I look after. It's this feeling of if I scratch, if you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Mm -hmm. It's just like, yeah, I have to have this if I'm going to give you this. So it's like complete, you know. You're looking after each other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jane? Jane, it, to me it feels like it's so automatic that you, it just happens. Like you're just so used to it, these I give you this feeling and you give me that and then it's just automatic. It's like earlier when I was earlier this week when I was talking about fear of change, how we end up creating comfort zones in. We just sort of just slip into them, we don't even notice they're there most of the time. We just all of a sudden until it gets challenged, that's the first time I even notice that they're there. It just becomes a little it slowly blends in. That's why addictions are gonna be quite difficult to try and discover a lot of the time. That's why we've got to try and let you understand the feelings or try and get you to feel the feelings of your addiction, the feeling of compulsion when that comes up. You feel driven to go and do something. It's, a lot of times you don't even know why. You just got to get it met. And so trying to get these, trying to catch it before it starts happening, because they're so insidious, like Mary was saying. They're so ins they're hard to find a lot of the times, especially when we don't want to. We just don't want to most of the time. But they're quite tricky little suckers too. It's going to take a lot of work, and it's worth it. Mila, I have a question. Could also codependency be about one carrying um, one special sort of um, feelings so the other one don't have to feel that? That's the whole idea, yeah. yeah. man comes along and says, I'll protect the woman so she doesn't have to feel fear. Yeah, but, but yeah. I, I have been in a relationship when he came home and told me things that made me very angry, mm -hmm. but he didn't have to react. But, on that person because I took care of the anger. So you're taking care, it's codependency. Yeah, yeah. It's always taking yeah, care. Taking care, yeah. Of, taking of care of the other one's emotions. Yeah. 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 We've got to try and get it all back to this feel good sort of place, that's what we're after. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just keep moving on and give you an idea of some of them. So the placating man with the angry woman. So we saw a demonstration here the other day with the, in 
personal interaction with a man. I was like, oh, my life's been like that though too. Always looking after the woman, making her feel good about herself. And I'm scared of the angry woman. So I end up just telling her that she's right or whatever it might be as well. And like she gets it out of me, like gets a feeling that she can control a man. So she feels in control then. So the housewife who does everything for the man and wants to be mothered. So what does she get? Jane? Yeah. Jane, um, she feels worthy. Yeah. Sense of yeah, self yeah, worth. Sense of worth by doing her tasks. Mm -hmm. yeah. What does the man feel? When he's been mothered. What does he get out of that deal? Yep. Yeah. Um, Ken, down the front. He feels love. Yeah. By his partner. Yeah. What's he got to give up? Um, it's usually given a take in the barter system. Well, he, he gives up his responsibility. Yeah. For, to take care of his partner. Yeah. Yeah. What does a lady give up? She takes care of his responsibility, really, so I'll just keep moving on. <laughs> Where are we? So the abused woman gets to avoid responsibility and financial responsibility, but must barter the occasion of violence. The violent partner gets to feel needed and in power and in control by beating up the woman. She's willing to accept his violence, and he's okay to give her the violence. As long as he gets to feel in control and she gets to get away with having a life that the man looks after her. He's all pretty familiar. It would be good to, as a personal um, exercise, start discovering your own in all of the relationships you've had. Just go back through them and you'll start seeing a pattern of your injuries. Yeah, because there's a lot of us in a lot of these examples here. So when I'm actually abusing others, what's that feel like? I've got an addiction. I know it. I'm abusing them. I know I'm abusing them. What do I feel? Why am I doing it? There's a feeling that's driving me. Why am, why am I doing it? Yes, Cal? Um, I feel powerful and in control. Yeah. It's basically what it's all about, isn't it? I want to feel powerful and in control of my painful feelings. I don't care that I'm hurting them. I just want to feel, I'm so desperate, I, want, I don't care about the hurt at all. I'm willing to coerce the person, manipulate them. I'm quite sneaky with the things I'm going to do to still get my addictions met. I don't care that it's going to hurt them. I have no care at all. So I want them that bad. So how does this feel like in our relationships with our children? It's happened a lot. It's happened to all of you. You're all children at one stage. It's the abuse of an adult grooming the child. The relationship with the mother and father's not getting on so well. They're not connecting anymore. They've got children. Maybe say they've got a boy and a girl. And the man starts having an emotional relationship with the child, trying to get his good feelings met from the girl now. And the mother may have the same sort of feeling. He doesn't want to connect with the man emotionally, so she starts connecting with the boy emotionally, trying to get love feelings from the boy. They get their sexual feelings met from each other, but they use the children to get their feelings met. You're grooming the child to love them, take from them, basically. Manipulating the child's will. What do we do with the children when they're a little bit sort of out of our control? Bribery? Usually works, doesn't it? What's another way to try and get a child to do what you want? Take away love. Be angry at them. It works all the time. Every time. Just take away love. I'll do whatever you want. It's horrible, isn't it, really? Controlling the child's behaviour with force in order to feel in control rather than for the purpose of educating them in God's laws. 
pretty dark the things we do, doesn't it? In our addictions. So, why do I have no interest in developing a relationship with God and I only have an interest in re- having relationships with people? Why do I not want a relationship with God but I want a relationship only with people? Linda? Linda, because God doesn't meet our addictions and we want those feel-good feelings and so... And we can't see God and we can't touch God. We can only feel God. And so it's very easy to brush that aside and say God's not real because I can't see him or hear him or feel him or her or whatever. And so we want the addictions to be met and we want to feel good and we want to be nurtured and we want to be looked after. And God will do that, but not in the way we expect it. Spot on. Simple answer. (laughs) Because people meet my addictions. Because people want codependency. We want to have the addictions met by others. We don't want to have a relationship with God. We don't want to investigate that relationship. People do it for us. We believe that works. People give us instant gratification. I have to work at my relationship with God. I have to start discovering myself. I have to start discovering what's inside of me. I have to become observant of my own feelings and my own actions in my daily life. That's too hard. People want a bartering system. People believe in the bartering system. I want something back for my effort. I want, to, I want something back. There's not a feeling of love coming from that at all, of going into it with a feeling of love. God does none of these things. None of them. You're not going to get these things from God. God won't meet any of your addictions. So real growth in love... Oh, we're just going on to another subject too. Here's this, uh, what are the advantages of seeing my addictions? One of them is real growth in love now becomes possible. How is that? Linda? If you can see what you're doing then you can acknowledge what you're doing and then you can make some different changes and have some different choices totally. towards God and become more loving. Yeah, always turn the direction towards love. Yeah. It's always going to end up being rewarding. Yes, yeah. and it's hard work. Yeah. It is, but it's to worth it. With, it's yeah. totally, totally, totally worth it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. It's going to help us connect with God too, like you're saying. That's where we really want to learn about love. So true loving relationship with myself and education of myself in love is now possible. Isn't that a good thing? A real relationship with God is now possible. Isn't that an awesome thing? Yeah. Maybe one day you'll be more enthusiastic about that. <laughs> A real relationship with my soulmate is now possible. How do you feel about that one? <laughs> Getting better? <laughs> You've got a yeah, high crowd. <laughs> a real loving relationship with children, friends, the environment are all now possible. How much is life going to be better? Than, like, it's going to be so much better, isn't it? So much freer. Kind of all that sucking and horrible feelings going on. You might have to sort of notice what's going on with that person. What am I not getting from them? What have I got to do to get it? And all that, all that busy stuff. You have so much more energy to go and enjoy all these things too. Your relationships with the other, your relationships with the environment, your relationship with God as well. You start discovering more things and being more passionate and creative and not spontaneous like a child is then. I will no longer be influenced by people, whether I can see them or not. What does that mean? Yes. Rose. (laughs) I'll be no longer spirit influenced. Yeah. People are still, spirits are still people as well. They're still involved in our lives. Mm. But negatively, wanting to take me down the whole of. If we're on this system, definitely negative. If we're on, we want to start loving people, then we can attract some loving spirits Mm. too. So we won't be influenced. This system, spirits love it. Love it, love it, love it. 
in your addictions? Oh, yeah, baby, they're in there with you. They want to be involved in all of your addictions. But when we start wanting to change that system, we, don't want to, we start wanting to discover our addictions inside of ourselves or unloving actions, we're starting to shed off all the damage that the spirits come with us, do with us. They just manipulate us a lot in that system as well, easily, very easily. We're so predictable in that, in that way. They know what we're going to do next. We do it all the time. Yeah. So we don't want to be influenced by those sort of spirits. You'd like to have a little more, more influence of the loving type. So I'm just going to wrap this up pretty quick. In conclusion, so I've learned in this discussion why we want our addictions met. So why was that? Dennis? Dennis, to feel good. Yeah. Simple, isn't it? How to recognise our addictions? How do we start recognising them? Jane? Jane, um, to start feeling an emotion, like an emotional feeling to it. What sort of feeling would you be looking out for? I'll, I'll start looking at things that I'm really wanting, needing. Yeah, these sort of feelings. Yes. These sort of feelings start happening inside yeah. ourselves. Mm. The compulsive, the frenzy, compulsive sort of thing. desperate, needy desperation. Yeah. Yep. 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 And because it's usually an uncomfortable feeling come up just before that. If you can recognise that's what just happened. An uncomfortable feeling come up just before that feeling. Try and drop back into that feeling. Like work it back. Work out what just happened. Go back to that feeling, and you realise that's what I'm running from. I need to look at that one. I need to feel how afraid I am of that feeling, and discover more about it. So, what are the benefits of letting go of all of our addictions? Kel, put your hand up, Kel. Yeah. Um, we. We can learn to love ourselves and um, learn to give to others. Yeah, we get to experience real love, we will, mm. rather than this fake love, the yeah. addictions we believe is love. We learn what love is from God's perspective, not from the world's perspective. So, unless I'm willing to learn what love actually is and be taught by the creator of love, which is God, I'll be leading a life with the only results possible being a painful experience. How are we getting that one through here? I hope so. Because you don't want to go down the life of a painful experience when you can have an alternative one, which would be a good experience, a joyful experience, and a happy experience, fulfilling experience. I'd love it if you guys could experience that. <laughs> so I'm wrapped up. I've got some homework for you. Oh, there we go. Your addictions result in painful experience. I've got some homework for you guys. I'll just leave these up for you too and you can write them down at your leisure. So I'll just quickly read them through. Write down every time you felt compelled, obsessed, infatuated, this section of the diagram here, and if, just as we feel the, com the compulsion to go into an addiction, when you felt that feeling in your life, in relationships. Write down what you do when you satisfy the compulsion and when the compulsion is not satisfied. And the third one is... Write down what frustrates you about your relationship with God. And I'm just going to say thank you very much. <laughs>